Okay, part six. So we left off right here. We're about to start the next dungeon. We uh, completed Kalinka Ruins. We got the uh, laser, upgraded it. We haven't gotten to use it yet, and we will here for sure. So anyway, there's like a few elevators in the game where you just press circle and it'll automatically give you the uh, option. I think there's like three of them, three or four, and they're all in this dungeon pretty much. Normally you'd have to like circle and then like text skip button to get the text to finish, but whatever. This one you can just press circle and you're ready to go. Anyway, escape forward first. All right, I'll turn. Another like turn. I know these guys are interesting. Uh, they're invincible right now, but what we're gonna do is you get up close to them, and it makes them vulnerable. At least their limbs. You want to shoot out all, all four of these. And once you get rid of all four of them, then the dude is dead. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the laser, using L2 D-pad to aim. Or I guess the analog stick if you're fine with how sensitive it is, but I prefer L2 D-pad. Jeez, he, he throws them far. So what we're going to do is shoot in between the left set of two and the right side. Or we can do right and left, depending on which you're comfortable with, but I prefer left first. So get up close, back up a tad, left and right. Didn't get put all of them, but hey. Still not difficult. The floor Jump across this room. It's very slightly fast in this game. Now we have high gravity. gravity Funny thing is, you can go right back on the other side of that field, and you then it'll still keep the high gravity. Get away from me. So, just a little interesting thing. Anyway, turn to the right. Got this guy. So there's three of those in this room, and you have to kill them all to uh, open the doors. And the easiest way is to just flip them with the laser and then shoot them. And the funny thing is, you can tap the laser, and it won't drain any energy. But it is enough to uh, to make them flip over, which is pretty cool. So we got one on the left, got one back there, one back there, and the door we go into is over there. So starting from the left. You laser this guy, shoot him, jump up here, but do not do not go to the middle, because you'll get these leeches. I believe they're on all four parts of the mid platform, so you, you want to be careful. All right, there is that one. Left corner. One to the right. Uh, to the right. Tap triangle. Buster, and then continue on this foot direction. Now the next one. Next room is very similar to that, except there's two on either side of us at the start, and then one at the corner. You can do left first or right first, doesn't matter, I go left first. Then there's the other one. I pretty much start out lasering one of them, then while they're flipping in the air, you laser the other one. And while that one's flipping in the air, you go back to the other one, buster it, and buster the other one. Then you want to go over here, because that one, he's normally like in this area somewhere, or like right over there next to that platform where he is. So when you jump up here, go to the left a bit, tap the laser, buster him, and then you just go left. So as far as like map goes, oops, like from where you start, you want to get rid of spider guys, and then go west, and get rid of more of them, and then go south. That's if you like using mini map directions. But if you just follow the way I did it, then it's pretty easy ever to remember. Let's keep going straight. We got another one of those dudes with the uh, four limbs. Alright, we're gonna turn left. And go into the first door. Straight. Got another one of those guys. And we got a tall guy. They can just skate around this side. It's really lenient. If you're feeling really that scared of him, you can stop and laser him. But it's 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 very very lenient. It's more lenient than the guys at the intro dungeon. So I recommend just skating around the side. No need to be a baby. <laughs> Oops. Skates, 
Now this room, there's two ways you can go about it. One is quicker than the other, but is more risky. So the easiest way you can do it would just be to hold lock on and laser. And then you can kill both of them, but that wastes a lot of ammo that we don't have to, and we're standing still. But the next way I'll show you is risky, so if you don't feel like doing that, you can laser both of them like that. But here's the other way I do it. I lock on. And just shoot them with three buster shots while being aware of where I am on the platform. Because if you're not careful, it is possible to fall off the ledge into this little in these lava squares or go towards the middle of the uh, sections and get stuck by a leech so that one is a little risky if you're not like good with your movement and like have the map in your head so you know where to go so that way is faster but it's definitely more risky if you're not good with your movement I'm gonna go to the right this time because we're in another big circular room circular hallway room for the first door on the right and then instead of going straight this time I think there's like three rooms that are shaped like this and for the first one you go straight this one you go to the right and then the last room that's just like this that we see in a bit you just go straight so we would continue on through this one but it's locked see the uh, lights glowing so what you would do instead is just go into this room we have to take care of two enemies and then we can leave again. So what you want to do is as soon as you get in here, hold lock on and laser, wait until he flips over. Let go and uh, press lock on again to toggle. Do it again. And again. Because lock on in this game works kind of like a toggle. So you, lo you lock on to the first guy, when he flips over, you release and re-lock on, it'll go to the guy on the left. Then when he flips over, do it again. When the other guy gets back up, you kill him, and same for the other one. Now that door is open, now we can go through. Go straight. Keep on going straight. This place is almost like a maze, but a lot of it's just going straight pretty much. Ignore that side path. Another one of these guys. More. And the elevator. Is this one of those instant dialog box ones? Nope. Whatever. Alright, so now we're in the uh, Looks like you've made residential the area. And our goal is to get to this middle island, but not all of the doors are open, so you can't just go like to that middle left one and then go right in. You have to kind of like go up and around and then go left into it so the directions are straight straight right straight right right or if you're doing like northwest and whatnot then it's north twice east uh, see one two times south once and then west but it's it's pretty easy to memorize let's go straight like, you can kind of tell where you're at on the mini-map. See, the bigger portion is the island the island we're trying to get to. So that door's locked. Be away from me. So, normally, just go straight, straight again. I'm gonna go to the right. Go straight. Go right. Now for this last right room, uh, there's one of those fire Zakabons running around, and you can land on them if you're jumping out of these right turn doors like I'm doing. So you want to be careful of this guy. I have landed on him a few times, so be careful. You can shoot him if you want, or just have careful movement. But that's the building where the master uh, lives. Just look out. I'll bet you go to the left side of the building and go right on it. Heal up data. All right, now here's the boss rush room right to the end of the game. And uh, these bosses, two of them, they're not really any different. Well, more like three of them are easy. 
and one is really hard and this cost runners many runs and then the final boss after the four and see there's some of those instant dialogue box elevators so here we go the gravity back to north. time for the boss rush now this first one here is the frog boss from uh, Amanda Ruins. What we're gonna do is laser its mouth when it opens it, but you wanna like laser the side of it, because if you get the right pattern, it'll shoot out bubbles first. But you don't wanna like shoot in the middle of the bubbles, because the bubbles will be eating a lot of your damage. Or he can jump onto my platform that I'm standing on, which is bad RNG. Alright, so you shoot the edge of his mouth, the side of it. Because otherwise, you would be shooting like all the bubbles and it would be eating up a ton of your damage and you wouldn't kill him right off the bat. So let's see if I can show that right here. Okay, he's jumping, that's bad RNG. He'll still do bubbles though. See how slow the damage is? See, didn't kill him. That's not what we want. If he gives you bubbles, aim at the side of his mouth. Ah, bad RNG again. He gave me the big hop this time. He dies real fast, but you have to wait for that animation to end before you can even open the door. So he can do one of three things, and two of those things are bad RNG, but thankfully the bubbles tend to be pretty common, but they're not always that common. So just wait and see what he does. Bubbles. You can tell what he's going to do based on the out, based on the movement of his feet. That was bad luck on that one particular bubble being right where I needed to go. Jump over this chest because we're not going to go back. That chest has 100k in it, by the way, but it's useless to us right now. Now the next one, it's not the jellyfish. It's the blob dude from uh, Kalinka Ruins. Now this boss is more or less an auto-scroller. He's super easy, you can play it the same way every time, and it'll always go the same way every time. So at the start, just lock on laser. For about that much damage. Now there's a spot you can stand in to get like, fast damage. See, watch his health. It'll like, kind of go down at inconsistent rates. That one was kind of consistent, but what you would normally do or no, what you would do if you want to like save some frames is stand roughly around this spot when it becomes vulnerable again, and you'll do the uh, quick damage, but otherwise if you stand right where you started or something, then the damage will be inconsistent. So I'll show that right here. I'll show you what the inconsistent damage looks like. I guess I'm still... I'm still getting the fast, consistent damage. It might just be a PSP only thing, I'm not sure. Oh, anyway, when he spawns the platform, stand in the corner of this one. Lock on, and just like before, laser right here. But since you're staying on this corner, you wait until he goes up there. You can just laser him some more. And then buster him a bit, because when uh, you want to run, from, uh, run, uh, run away from him again. Uh, 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 English, it. Uh, so just run away from him. No big deal. Just like the first time. And Buster him. Easy boss. Fun fact, you can go out of bounds in this room. Like when he spawns the platforms, you want to jet skate, do a big jump right over this door or the other side, you can make it out of bounds. It's pretty cool. Yep, you do have to wait this out. It's locked. Alright, so next is the jellyfish. And that jellyfish is like the worst fight in the entire game, except maybe next to the final boss. Like as far as difficulty goes. Because the jellyfish destroys new players. This is why we need the armor. Speaking of armor, I didn't even equip it. You would ideally put that on for geats. I wonder why I took so much damage from the uh, fire stuff from before. I didn't have it equipped. So, 
you'll definitely want to equip that um, after you buy it. I'm so used to not using it, so you have to forgive me there. Hello? So you'll see why we need the armor. Each of the sparks they shoot out does like a quarter of your health, roughly, if you don't have the armor. But with the armor, you can actually survive a bunch more hits. So, this fight really sucks. There's three of them, and since there's no water, what they do is they sit there spinning around and shooting sparks all over the place. And they're invincible to your buster until, like, they start shooting. Just look at all these sparks all over the freaking place. And they hurt a lot. So watch how much damage they do without your armor. God, that's so much. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be jumping to either the left or the right side. It's preference. Most of us prefer jumping to the right side. And we're going to be lining up two of them and lasering two of them at once and getting a double kill. Now, that double kill isn't exactly easy to get. It's possible to drop some damage or start it up too late. And then you might get bonked by some sparks before you're able to kill both of them. So this is going to take practice. If you're doing this in real runs, it's possible you might die to these guys. So try to be careful and try to practice as much as you can. Because this this boss kills new runners all the time. It killed me a lot too. So go to the side. Do not a full jump. Try to line up with the laser. And hopefully get a double kill. Most of the time you might get hit by one spark before you're able to move again, which is fine. But it's possible to get both of them and then start moving around like I did. Like, you don't want to do a full jump. The gravity's increased there, so a full jump is like that. We want to do like kind of a mid jump under high gravity. Turning your camera while you do the jump and make sure, making sure you line up two of them. I wouldn't exactly recommend locking on, but let's try it with locking on. It might be easier. Looks like the gravity's increased again. Okay, so you can do lock-on if you want, it's just, I prefer to do manual aiming. Because there, there is, the hitboxes are kind of picky, there are spots where you can do more damage. Like, it's fairly common to try to do this and you shoot at the second one from the, behind the first one. And you might be misaligned and do like very little damage, see, like that. That was pretty crappy damage. And it's possible to get that if you're not lined up properly, so that's, that's kind of why I don't recommend lock-on, but... You can make it work like I just did. You just have to make sure you position yourself correctly. Then jump. Like oh, see? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Oof. I'm aiming at the wrong one. This is how the fight could just go to hell and kill you. Oof. So what you would do is like... Once you kill the first two and you have this third one left, you want to count how many sparks it shoots up. One, two. So like when you get done lasering, you count how many it shot out and dodge them. It looks and like then start lasering it. So like it shoots, like you're lasering at the third one. It shoots three sparks. And before the sparks hit you, you want to let go of your laser and count how many sparks fly by you. And then you start shooting again. So if it shot three at me, I quit lasering before they hit me, move and see if three of them uh, went by me, then I start lasering again. But he's not the hard part. The hard part is getting the double kill and trying not to get hit too many times. So let's try again with lock on one more time. See if I can still make it work. Otherwise, I would recommend trying to practice with manual aim. So right, camera turn, mid jump. That's like uh, manual aim. I'm too used to doing it, man. I didn't count many shots. That was like five. I decided to take like the damage because like the his health wasn't low enough so that I could just kill him right before getting hit. So this, this boss is gonna take a lot of practice. Uh -huh, I might get hit before they both die. Oh, got him. Okay. Ah, that was me greedy. So yeah, the third guy isn't the big problem. The big problem is killing the first two before you get hit too many times and possibly die. So let's try to lock on him. Looks like the gravity's increased again. I 
Okay, barely got them. Four sparks. Oh, that's fine. One, two, three. That's about how you would it looks like handle it on an average attempt. But I didn't hit me. So, it's, this fight is difficult. You get just smacked all, all over the place with the sparks. And it's really hard to find an opening to, hit, to do any lasering, so practice this fight as much as you can, because this fight really sucks. <laughs> it really, really sucks. The next boss you'll be practicing the most is the final boss, probably, but that one definitely you want to practice. Tip over the chest. They want to fight the Dino Bot last. I don't know why they picked this order for, but whatever. Now the the big Dino Bot from Solcata, we fight him the exact same way as the first time. Even down to the movement, you start out in the same position. You start skating and you go up left. Stay in front of him. And buster him. He's kind of resistant to special weapons, so we don't laser him here. We, want, we kind of want to consider that only. Just like before, just shoot him a lot, stay in front of him so he doesn't shoot out more of those orbs that fly around all over the place. And once you get rid of him, you just turn to the left and the exit's uh, on this wall over here. Like, there's not much explanation for him other than he has more health and there's no reason to laser him. However, actually, if you're doing the uh, extra attack on the laser route on like PSP or if you're working in the PlayStation, if you're doing the bonus attack upgrade on the laser, then it's worth it to laser him over the buster, but that's only if you have the second attack upgrade. Even with one attack upgrade, it's still better to, uh, to buster him. So just keep that in mind. Jump. One more jump. A couple more jumps. And we're coming up on the final boss. Straight ahead. Jump, turn, jump. Another hallway to skate through. Talk to Data and heal up. Ah. And if I were you, I would try to make sure your ammo is full. The thing about healing at Data is that, like, he only refills the blue bar. So if like, if you heal, if you wasted all of your blue bar and some of your green, and then you recharge your blue bar at data, then the green bar will try to recharge and take away more of the blue bar. So if you're not max blue bar, then, then uh, you heal. And if you're not at max and, it, and the green bar takes away some blue bar, then uh, you don't want to heal at data twice in a row like this. What you do want to do actually is Heal him, see what your energy bar does, and then talk to him again, and then heal. So if you do it twice, it won't do anything. So make sure you have your um, your laser energy ready to go. Make sure you still have like some form of healing, because if you're fighting the jellyfish and you get destroyed, then you'll have to like waste your fried chicken and some of your canteens. So we brought some heals with us, and make sure you have like at least one heal for you. Or with you for this final boss. Otherwise, you have to be really careful if you're going to do it with no heals. So, yeah, so here we go. We're gonna fight Sarah, the final boss. She's not too bad once you learn all of her attacks, but the problem is that some of her attacks are pretty brutal for both forms. And I'll try to go over all of them if possible. She might give me some RNG patterns where I don't end up getting any of them, but let's try and go for it. No, don't we door. Well, Tech skips. The library. Yeah, I got most of them. Skate forward. Drop. Ah, I did a mid jump. If you do a little drop on that ledge, you wanna do a jump. So here we go. Sarah, final boss. What you want what you wanna do is laser her right at the start, but her weak spot is kinda of like her stomach area-ish. On PlayStation it's PS and PSP it's kinda of different. 
on PlayStation, you want to aim, like, kind of to her side, like, in between her stomach and her arms. But on PlayStation, you kind of want to aim, uh, on PSP, you want to aim roughly around her crotch. <laughs> it's funny, you want to aim, like, somewhat at her crotch to one of her sides. It's kind of like in between her side, crotch, and stomach. It's it's weird. You'll just have to practice aiming your laser and figuring out where the high damage spots are. And you'll see where they are based on the, on how fast the health bar depletes. So, right at the start. Aim at her. Shoot the laser. And find like a corner to stand in. Not the very corner, but I want the corners. Okay, here we go. So if she gives you this move, you just jump around the room shooting your buster. Well, I was at a bad position. She does, she does this a lot, so just roll all the way. But anyway, you want to find a corner to stand in, see where she goes if you aim at her weak spot. If she does that at you, roll. So once she takes some amount of damage, she'll start doing this. And you want to like jump or roll for that quake. And the quake's hitbox is not instant. That quake, like, it comes out but the hitbox isn't present until, like, a little ways into the animation, so you have some room to dodge it. Now, if she's too close to you, then you cannot dodge it no matter what you do. It's like an absolute frame-perfect dodge if you want to, like, dodge it if she's extremely close to you. But once you get dodged the Quake, laser all the bombs. Ugh. Stop doing that. That's a time waster, man. Ah, getting weak damage. Laser all the bombs. Oh, she's kind of close by. Uh, I hate it when she uses this move really close to me. So what you would do, if she does that close to you, you would kind of like, time it. So like, what you do is you would turn to the side and time it, so like right before the shots hit you, you roll. But that's, that's really difficult. That attack can be kind of a, a bitch to dodge. Stop doing that! Do the uh, the other attack you haven't done yet. Well, how many times are you going to do this? I have more of that. Yeah, screw you. So, those sparks that she shoots at you, those spark orb things. Normally, depending on your position, when you're lasering her, and then you see that she's gonna do that, you wanna lock onto her, then just jump out around the room shooting your buster. But depending on where she is and where you are, you could get stuck on like one of these walls and get hit by it. So that attack is really finicky. You can't exactly dodge it all that easily from just looking straight at it and rolling. You have to like stay like, what is it, perpendicular? It'll be kind of perpendicular to the attack and roll through it. Rather than rolling to the side of it, you want to, like, roll through it. But normally, what you do is just jump around the room and it shouldn't hit you. But if it does, it's probably because of where she's positioned and where you are. Because being against or near a wall when she does that attack is kind of a bad thing. So let's start, uh, start another attempt. Laser at the start. Aim for a weak spot. Find a corner to stand in. No, I'm not ready to stop it. The damage is alright. Now, it does have a limited range, so you can stay out of the range of it. Like I just did. But most of the time, you want to jump or roll. If she does the quake again, I'll try to demonstrate a roll. Alright, I'm going to try a roll. Watch this. The roll is a pretty good way to dodge it too. If you're not good, if you're not, if you're getting hit too much with the jump. There's one more attack that she doesn't do that often. Ah. So there's one more attack that she does where she kind of like glows blue and shoots a bunch of these little missiles at your feet. What you would do is like you could jump back or jump to the side and you'll dodge it really easily. I want to see if I can get it because she's she's not giving it to me. So for this bus, I would not recommend locking on and lasering. Now, 
if you have the second laser attack upgrade, then you can lock on and it won't matter. It does like the same damage as the weak spot for some reason. So it's almost like you don't have to aim if you have the extra attack upgrade. She really likes doing this attack a lot, like once she starts taking some amount of damage. She'll never do it if, you, if she hasn't taken any damage at all yet. Okay, here's the other attack here. So just like that. You just keep locked on and jump around the room shooting your buster. And dead. So, she seems to, <laughs> she seems to like, not want to do that blue glowing uh, missile attack I, I mentioned, but it's really easy to dodge. You'll know it when you see it, because like she'll be somewhat close to you. She'll start glowing blue, and some green things will appear above her head, and then she'll shoot them at your feet. So all you do is just jump back. It's that simple. I would try to demonstrate it, but she's not giving it to me. But just keep that in mind. If she glows blue, then jump away. Easy peasy. So once once she's dead on her first form, you want to go into your menu, and use the hyper cartridge, because we're gonna need a lot of our laser ammo for the next phase. I make this a separate save state. Uh, I'll save over this. So hyper cartridge back out. Now for this form, you want to aim at like this lower portion of her body. Like don't lock on like this. You want to aim at this. So when she laughs like that, she's gonna run at you or fly at you, whatever. What's the matter? Okay, this attack. This attack is the one that most people struggle with, and I can understand why. So what you want to do for this, like this attack, it kind of follows your position so what you want to do is like weave like you want to move left to right a lot and the laser will try to follow you but it has really slow turning so that's why it swings really wide so watch this so move around see how it's swinging around like that it rises up while it does that too so oh wait this attack okay this attack is also pretty good but I'll, I'll get to this one in a sec. So that big laser, you want to like move left or right to make sure it sways side to side. Because otherwise, if you're not moving very much, it won't it won't like sway hardly at all and becomes like almost impossible to dodge. Because as it's getting ready to, as as it's reaching you, it's like slowly rising up from the ground and upward. So you want to like make it swing left to right real far, and then jump over it like whenever you feel comfortable. Because there's various heights where you can jump over it. So just practice that attack. And just jump over it when you think you can. But the main the main goal of that attack is to get to swing left or right. Now this attack, if you see that she stops in front of you, what she's gonna do is fly over your head, do a ton of tiny little lasers from these red things, <laughs> her udders. So if you see this, what you want to do is roll to like one of the sides, move forward a few steps, and then lock on and laser, and you'll do like tons of damage because she won't be able to touch you if you stay in the right spot. So watch this. Roll, move forward, laser, and she will not be able to touch you. Look at this. Now I might get slapped here. Not by killer. <laughs> like if if you don't kill her before that attack's over you might get slapped by one of the hands when she's getting ready to reset. But yeah. Let's try to go for some more of her moves. So laser her, uh, udders. <laughs> There's the laugh again. Roll. Okay, I'm getting the same RNG as before. I might have to skip the cutscene at a different frame to get different RNG. That was like the god pattern, man. So let's skip this scene at a later spot, see if I get a different RNG. If not, I'll just have to redo the first fight. Okay, same start as before. Do something different. She did the laugh thing again where she flies at me. So when she's like roughly half health, she'll do this thing where she tosses like a black hole or a gravity well at uh, wherever you're positioned at currently. And that can be really bad depending on what she does next. So let's see what she does next. Okay, if she does meteors. So when she's like this, she's gonna like have meteors rain on the uh, field. Now, if you didn't have this gravity well, you would just run around and shoot your buster. But since we're stuck in the middle of this room, you have to use your skates to get out. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Right, now that we're away from it, 
Now we can lock onto our Shusa Buster while we run from the Meteors. Alright, another Gravity Well. What are we getting next? Okay, this is a common attack where she slams the ground and have this big purple wave come out. You cannot jump over this. So what you're gonna do is just roll right through it. You don't have to roll through it perpendicular, perpendicularly like I kind of explained with the yellow orbs from the last form. You can just roll anywhere. And it won't hit you most of the time. Alright, what do we have next? Another one. Like I said, this is a pre pretty common attack. Alright, here's the laser again. So just move left to right, make sure it sways and whatever, whatever the correct word is for it, just like swinging around wide. Okay, this is really bad RNG. It's extremely hard to get away from those lasers in the middle of the gravity well. Yeah, you suck! Now, let me go back to first form. Actually, no, never mind. Let's, let's try this second form again. I think that was just about all of her attacks. The thing is that the gravity well can make everything worse. Especially if you get the big laser in the middle of a gravity well. Then it's almost impossible to dodge. You'll kind of just have to tank it and like heal up afterwards. If she does get it again, I'll attempt to dodge it, but it's not easy for anybody, trust me. <laughs> that was kind of good RNG. She just like flew at me twice and then tried to go for meteors. I had to worry about like nothing. Now what you do not want at all is meteors at the very start. Meteors at the very start is awful because you can't afford to sit still and laser. Alright, big laser. Move around, make it swing, then jump over. Ah, she nicks me. Alright, so there's one other move that she's not doing here either. It's also another pretty common move that she gives me. It's where she like she like dashes around the room real fast. It's almost like a teleport, or I guess like, I don't know, double team from Pokemon or something, but she kind of dashes around the room real fast, like a few times, and then stops somewhere. She's invincible during that, but if you get that move, just hold, hold lock on, and when, then when she's finished, then you'll figure out, you'll, you'll lock on and find out where she is, but it's possible for that to not happen if you're at like one corner of the stage, and she does that and stops at the other corner. But if you're still in the middle of the room, just hold lock on, and you'll lock onto her no matter what. <laughs> so, this boss isn't too tough, but she can definitely break your shit if you don't know how to dodge some things like the big laser, for example. I was trying to get another pattern by skipping another at another time. Gats is attempting to assist you! That's so what? Alright. Can we get another pattern here? Huh. I'm stuck with like her doing this at the start of the time for some reason. I should redo the first fight to try to get a different pattern for this fight. I should have attempted to dodge that, but I didn't have to with how much damage I was doing. Alright, let's try to do the first fight again. Let's see if we can get a different pattern for both. Mix up the RNG. Shooter roughly in the stomach. Like you can, t you can look at the health bar and tell if you're doing enough damage or not. Alright, just jump around the room. Ah, not good damage. So just holding lock on a laser will get rid of all of those. Why so far away? There's more laser opportunities. Oh boy. So just practice this fight while you'll get the timing sound for when you dodge the quake. Oh, there it is. I jumped to the side, but you can jump back. I was kind of in the corner, so jumping to the side was better. There it was again. I'm surprised he was doing it that often. <laughs> okay, let's make another save state here. Alright, see if we get a different pattern for the second fight. So I want to show that quit that uh, dashing attack. There it is. Hold lock on, 
Oh, she did it twice. Stop! <laughs> Dodge that with a roll. Okay. Roll, move forward, lock on, and she's done. Like, you want that attack to happen without the gravity well. If you're not on the gravity well part yet, and she does that attack, you're in good shape. Because all I have to do is just roll to the side, move forward, lock on, and you're good. She won't be able to touch you. Alright, let's see if she can give me another different pattern to deal with. Because, like, the gravity well mixes things up so much that, like, the fight isn't always going to go the same way. Even if you're used to her attacks already. Alright, let's see what we got. She gonna do it three times again. I think I have the same pattern. Okay, I heard the laugh, so I know to get out of the way. Ah, okay. Another laugh, roll. Wait, roll. Gravity well, where am I getting? That's fine. Alright, I'll leave her alive. Let's we'll dodge some more of her attacks. Uh, gravity well made that one really dumb. So if you if you don't have the position down yet, she really tries to home in on you, see this? You can just kinda like run to the sides and then run right through them. It's not a big deal. Like the tracking seems tough. Oh my gosh, it's gonna that move combined with this gravity well is awful, man. Black hole plus lasers. So it looks like she's tracking you well, but you can just keep running like directly to the side and won't hit you. Alright, give me something else. Okay, you can dodge this. Ah, timing is really rough though. Roll. Alright, big laser. Move left to right, make it swing around, jump over it. Like, that, that attack is really intimidating for a lot of people. But it's not too bad once you just know how it operates. And if she does that while you're in the gravity well, you can't make the laser move, so that's, it becomes way worse. It's technically possible to dodge, but sometimes you might just have to tank the hit and then heal yourself or just be careful afterward. So both forms can be pretty tough, but with enough practice, she's not that hard, but she's definitely tough on your players. It makes Juno look like freaking cake from Legends 1, man. So once you beat once you beat her, you want to skip the scene as soon as possible, because the IGT is still ticking right now. The IGT keeps ticking until it finally shows up at the end after the credits. So Oops, not canteen. Hypercurt. Let's kick her ass again. Then we want to skip the scenes all the way until we see the timer. Oh, you suck. Okay, big laser. Ugh. Okay. It doesn't technically have to swing around wide, just enough for you to get over it. And done. Skip the scenes. Tron Bond and Legends 2, you can skip straight to the IGT, where the IGT is still ticking. But in Legends 1, the IGT stops ticking uh, at the start of the final cutscene after you confirm on roll. But you can't skip anything after that either. But th this game and Tron Bond, you just uh, skip straight to the end with the pause button, and that's when your IGT stops. So yeah, um, I hope. This tutorial has been useful in learning the game. If you still have any questions, I'll try to explain them in the comments or wherever else you happen to contact me as best I can. And um, I'm still going to make the separate video for the PSP version of the game with the extra route you can do that makes this end game easier with a stronger laser. Because the differences with that is you start the side quest at the beginning of the game, then on Nino Island, you uh, throw Johnny off the ledge twice to make yourself uh, dark Mega Man, to make yourself evil. But the problem there is that some stuff 
increases in cost in the shop because being dark gives you a, a, a markup. So stuff will be more expensive. Not by a lot, but it's it's manageable. So you become Dark Mega Man. And then after you beat Salkata Ruins, you talk to the shady guy to uh, trade with him an item that you got from uh, the junk shop guy at the beginning of the game. And then uh, after you beat Kalinka Ruins, you go into the junk shop again to uh, trade with him uh, to sell him the item from the shady guy. And then you use that extra money to upgrade the laser twice. But like I said, I'll make a separate video showing all that stuff. But for now, uh, the route you would want to take is getting the extra buster part in Kalinka Ruins and then using that money to uh, buy yourself some extra armor and some canteens. And then as you get better at the game, you can just skip doing that entirely. But that, that PSP exclusive route, it's only like 20 seconds-ish slower than the optimal route. So you can you can do that route and still almost world record right now, actually. It's pretty interesting. So if you want an easier end game, then check out that video later. But until then, I uh, hope you enjoyed these tutorials. Hopefully they were easy enough to understand. If you still have any questions, go ahead and contact me and leave any comments down below. And... I'll try to answer them as best I can, so thanks for watching.